Hi, I'm Amy Osset Roan, and I am here today to answer the question, what does it mean to be a psychic? What is a psychic medium? And how do I get to be one? <laughs> um, so there's a lot to cover in just that. So um, first of all, being psychic or intuitive, to me, it means that you are connected and understand things from a broader perspective than the masses. You understand that there are connections that are made between people. You understand your connections between individuals in your life and situations that you're finding yourself in. And within all of that, you're looking for um, and understanding how to find some of the answers in all of that. It doesn't mean that you have all of the answers, because if that were the case, I would know all of the lottery number tickets, and um, I would be living in an incredible, I don't know, castle somewhere, because I could. Um, so, you know, psychic ability doesn't necessarily work that way. Um, sometimes also your psychic abilities or your intuitive sense, um, it it doesn't work for you because those are your lessons. So um, within the metaphysical world and the psychic senses, um, there are the clairs, what I like to call the clairs. You have your clairsentience, which means that you feel things. There's your clairaudience, which means that you can hear things. There's um, your clairvoyance, which means that you can see things or you get visions in your head. Um, and then I don't remember what the one is called, but there's, you can smell things um, and that sort of thing. So, um, and everybody's senses, uh, their psychic senses and their intuitive abilities, um, they work differently for each individual. So just because, um, you know, you're in a meditation class and, you know, everybody has their fantastic meditation and you go around the circle and everyone shares and someone talks about how they saw so many things and another person talks about how they heard so much, you know, wisdom coming in or guidance um, and you're just kind of sitting there going, mm, yeah, all I really felt was like this sense of peace that just flowed all through me and... Um, you know, I had a, a sense of knowing something, um, but I didn't see any visions or I didn't hear any, you know, angels or the music or see neon signs. Um, and that's okay because your experience is unique to you. And years ago, um, there was a television program on, um, and if you talk to me at all, you know how much I love Hollywood uh, because they tend to show a lot of truths um, that are hidden in things. Um, and there was a program on called Ghost Whisperer. And she, the storyline was that this woman, she um, could speak and see um, and hear things from people who have passed away. Um, she kind of had all the clairs going for her. And then later on throughout the seasons, they added a, a second person that was kind of helping or, you know, collaborating with her. And the interesting thing about him that I loved was that they showed that he could only hear the people. He couldn't see them. He could only hear them. So, you know, I, I personally, I really loved that because that, that kind of just opened the door to people being able to see that, you know, you have certain gifts and how those gifts work for you to do the things that you need to do out in the world around you. One of the things that you can do, so, oh, you know, because I, I get asked a lot, you know, how can I develop my my psychic abilities or my intuition and you know the thing that I always tell people is you be mindful and um, to try to meditate <laughs> try to meditate um, and meditation could be its whole other little blog post um, so you know meditating is something that there there's no just like all the clairs there's no one right way to meditate. You know, some days, um, you know, it, it, it's just a mindfulness. And I always tell people, you know, you can meditate, you know, when you're washing the dishes, you can meditate when you're driving down the road. It's just a state of being mindful, 
mindful and getting out of your own way and opening up to listen to thoughts that you have or impressions that you get or maybe even hearing something and you know the hearing of things it doesn't always sound you know I'm always telling my guides and and the universe like hey can you like talk to me in a sexy Australian accent or a French accent and you know that way I would know that it's you um, rather than just sounding like my own thoughts running through my head but um, actually over time I've gotten to where you know it doesn't have to have a different accent Um, it can just sound like me but the difference is that I can tell that it's not coming from within me. So I'm going to give you a simple exercise to do, um, which is just simply check in with yourself um, to see how you are feeling physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, so that anytime that you're in a crowd of people and all of a sudden you feel really sad or you feel really anxious, um, you'll be able to tell like, okay, that's not me, that's not how I'm feeling, I'm picking up on someone else that's in the room or the general um, vibe that's happening in the room. Um, And then I want to talk a little bit too um, about mediumship because um, mediumship is its own special clair and within mediumship you'll use the different clairs also. So a medium is someone who can speak with people who have passed away and um, are on the other side. When we do that, we have to learn how to have a kind of a dialogue with them. So they may choose to show us symbols, they may choose to show us an actual place, um, or they may choose to give us like a feeling about, you know, Um, how they feel about the person that you're talking to, um, how they passed away, um, those kinds of things, a a sense of who they're with on the other side. Um, And you might get visions or a feeling about all of that, or you might smell something. Um, So there's different ways in which that works. So um, we've talked about the different uh, ways that your intuition works, the different clairs. Um, We've talked a little bit about how to open that up within yourself. And, and really it's just, you know, working on meditating, working on being mindful and checking in with yourself. Those are three of the main things. And if you can practice those every day, um, you know, that p- partly in doing that along with, you know, there's other things that you can do, but, you know, we're going to start with that today in this video. Just that's where you can start to begin opening up your intuition. Um, and then, you know, mediumship. Um, I I didn't do, so I I guess I'll just share a little story. I didn't do mediumship for a long time when I started opening up because the energy of people who have passed away, it feels different. And I always described it as cobwebby. Um, it just, it has a different energy and a different, uh, frequency or vibration to it than, oh, say, you know, your archangels or your deities or your gods and goddesses or ascended masters. So um, I just didn't like it. Um, And so for a long time, I didn't open up to that. And I had a good friend of mine who uh, we worked in a store together um, offering readings. And, you know, she kept telling me, she'd be like, you're a medium. And I'd be like, no, I'm not. And she kept after me. and, and, And then, you know, over time, people would come to me for that reason and I had to just stay in that space of spirit and um, receiving information from the universe so that I could pass that over to the person that was talking to me and and give them the healing and the messages that they needed. Um, I've worked through my mediumship so um, I I had a lady just yesterday she wanted me to you know I told her all this information and, and I don't know if it wasn't, it wasn't satisfying enough to her. Um, and there was a lot of information that I gave, um, but she wanted a name. She goes, can you tell me the name of this person? And I said, and I said, no, I I don't get hung up on names because at the very beginning of my mediumship, I I tried, you know, working on giving someone a name, um, to help them connect with who I was connecting with. Um, but I was only, correct about 30% of the time. And to me, that wasn't good enough. Um, And so 
I, I was asking spirit, I'm like, okay, so why, why is the name thing not working for me? Um, and I want to say at this point, because maybe later, you know, three years from now, I'll be like super good at names. But um, they showed me like, I'm the club, I'm the medium, I'm the club where like all of the spirits um, want to go. And so when they're on the other side of the veil, they see a door that opens up. That's me opening up to the other side. And everyone comes rushing over because some of them you know, have not had the opportunity to reach out to their loved ones and say the things that they want to say. And so um, I use the guide Anubis. He's um, the jackal-headed Egyptian god of the underworld. And he stands kind of at the velvet rope, and everyone else is behind there. And he only allows the um, spirits of people who are connected with those that I'm talking to across the table through to me. There may be someone at the back of the line that, you know, has so much on their mind and they're at the back going, I'm Joe, I'm Joe, you know, I'm Joe. And so, you know, I'm sitting here with my client and I'm like, do you know anybody named Joe? And they're like racking their brains and like, I have no idea who Joe is. And so, you know, that's because Joe is just someone who um, wants to be heard. He, he's got a message to pass along but he's just desperate um, to, to share. And so, you know, I, I don't want to hear all of that or I don't want to pay too close attention to that um, because then it just gets in the way of me being able to focus on the people that are coming through for the client. So um, anyways, I hope that that helps to answer some of your questions about what it means to be psychic, the different types of psychic gifts that you have, um, the different ways that you can work with opening those up and what mediumship is. So um, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. Reach out to me, share with me experiences that you've had or other questions, and I'll be happy to answer that. And um, I will see you next time.